uh, today we're just going to have a bit of a miscellaneous talk about fridges, about expectations uh, of the fridge, uh, given that you know we're coming to summer, um, the heat, the ambient temperature and all those types of things, how they affect your fridges. So with the fridge, you are going to typically run the fridge as a fridge at about two degrees. Normally that's a, a reasonable amount. Obviously if you're up north, um, you might put it on zero to keep it under fridge temperature. Um, but if you're using it as a normal fridge at say two degrees or zero degrees or four or five degrees, you have to remember that will draw much, much less than if you're running it as a freezer. So if you have an 85 or 90 litre fridge and you're running it at minus 15 degrees, you've got to remember the question that we get mostly is how long will a neighbor run a fridge? It's really a, how long's a piece of string? Uh, how big's the fridge? How often you open it? What is the temperature setting you're going to have it at? Because if it's minus 15 as opposed to two degrees, it's a massive difference. Because a 100 litre fridge or, a, or somewhere around that mark, if you're running it as a freezer and you're running it in 50 degrees, you might have it in your car or your trailer or whatever, it's going to be running flat out. Now, if it's drawing 7 or 8 amp at the fridge and you've got a 100 amp hour Nomad, the 100 amp hour Nomad, 80% DOD, which means you've got around about 80 amp hour. You have a bit more because of the recovery. But if you work out the, the math involved in this, if your fridge is running, at 7 amp consistently because it's running as a freezer, 7 into 80 is how many hours? And that's how many hours you're going to get. So if you're running at 2 degrees and your fridge works at uh, an average of less than an amp an hour, say 0.75, round it up to 1 amp an hour on average, 1 into 80 is you've got 80 hours. So 80 hours is maybe what, uh, 4 days, 3 days, 3 and a half days? You'll probably get 4. That's given it's going to be drawing one amp less, but it depends again how many times you open the fridge, whether the fridge is full, whether there's warm food in there, and so on. So it's really important to understand how you're using your fridge and understand that every setting you put on your fridge will make a difference to the length of the time that you'll run a battery. So we will get questions, people say, I thought it might run a lot longer than that. The math is the math. You can't change that. It's simply how many amp hour you're using at the fridge, okay, into what you've got available. If you're using an AGM, just as an example, if you're using an AGM battery, and it'll say 160 amp hour AGM battery, and you're running a fridge, it will have a low, uh, low voltage setting on there. That 160 amp hour AGM battery is going to run right down, and it'll probably cut out when it's used only about 40, 45% of the battery and cut out. You've still got plenty left in the battery but you'll damage the battery go past 50% in general with an AGM. So with the lithium batteries, you don't have to worry about that. You can run this dead flat, it's not an issue. The issue is understanding what your fridge does and that the fridge, you must understand what amp it uses. There's no point plugging in and say, how long is my fridge gonna run? How many liters is the fridge? How big it is? You know, what type of fridge, how expensive it is? What type of compressor it is? Um, what temperature it's set on, what's the ambient temperature you've got it on, is it inside a van, is it outside a van, is it in a cabin or is it a camper, uh, it could be in, in sort of a box tray, I mean, is it in direct sun or is it not in direct sun? All these things make a difference to how long the fridge will run, it's nothing to do with the power source, it comes down to you understanding the way that you use your fridge and then you can work it out mathematically how long your uh, Nomad is going to run or any battery for, uh, for that instance. So it comes down to you understanding exactly about your fridge and not coming back to say to us and say, oh, the fridge only lasted, um, ran on the Nomad for 24 hours. And quite common, we'll say, well, were you running as a freezer? Oh yeah, I was running at minus 15 and I had it out, you know, it was up north, say in the Kimberleys, et cetera, and it's 50 degrees in, outside or inside a camper. Uh, it's gonna run hard and it might be running on an average five to seven amp hour. Uh, all day. So even if you're running for 12 hours in that heat at five to seven amp, five to seven amp at times 12 is gonna be what 60, between 60 and 80 amp, it's pretty much gonna be done in 20 hours uh, because overnight it's gonna draw less. That's the simple way it works. So it doesn't matter how big the battery is, you're still gonna have the same mathematical limitations that you need to understand. So that's how you work out how long will your fridge run on any power source, understand your fridge, before you go away camping, what you should do is do a dry run and work out, well, let's fill it up. How long would it last? At what temperature? And then you can work out, well, how much power have I got to put in to a power source to make sure my fridge never runs out? That's the smartest way to do it. Always run a dry run for a week before you go away and understand your fridge. Not so much the Nomad, but understand the fridge and how it draws over what period 
based on what temperature you're going to be using it and set at. Some fridges and have uh, combinations of fridge freezer. That's fine. It just comes down to what is the draw that that fridge is going to use and work it out mathematically, not what you think or you, you thought or maybe this. It's simply math. Work out what that draws an amp and put it into what available amp power you have. And that's simply how you work out your fridge. Second thing is, we covered this before, keep the runs, like don't do what I've got here. I've got a super long run here between the power source and the Nomad. You're gonna get a voltage drop, and that could be the difference of three or four hours because it's gonna hit the low voltage limitation of your fridge. So again, keep those runs short, and again, do some dry runs in your fridge to understand your fridge. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and not thousands of different types of fridges out there that all run differently, that all have different parameters, They'll all have different insulation and different uh, compressors. The best thing is you need to test it and to work it out yourself so you don't leave yourself in the open with, uh, you know, obviously getting uh, your uh, contents of your fridge warm. You want to make sure that you understand that fridge completely. So uh, hopefully that helps you out, um, gives you a better Christmas, make sure that, you know, you don't have any, any food that's going to go off because you ran your fridge uh, in a, in not its optimum uh, temperature and also optimum uh, power supply. So thanks again. Talk soon. Bye.